law enforcement. We urge our congressional delegation to be champions on this matter that affects all communities of color in New Mexico, not only immigrants. The regulations should require mandatory training by all, of all DHS law enforcement agents on the racial profiling pro prohibition in their obligations. This is only one part of the bill. But on the other hand, in the border enforcement section, we have, there is a strategy to achieve a 90% effective rate goal in high risk sectors of the southern border. The second is a fencing plan designed to reinforce current fencing and barriers. One of the enforcement triggers that have to be met before RPI, RPI can apply for permanent residents involves implementation of the E-Verify program, a program that we don't agree on. And one of the reasons why is because mandatory E-Verify will pose particular challenges to communities of color, many of which have endured a long history of employment discrimination, have been hit particularly hard by the current recession, and have experienced racial profiling at the hands of the growing immigration enforcement machinery. At least 80,000 workers lost out on a job last year due to a mistake in the E-Verify system. Although we, although so we do not agree with all pieces of the legislation, this might be the best that we can get out of the Congress. We must not forget that this is only the starting point of the process. The legislation was introduced this week and a hearing will be held uh, this Friday and this coming Monday in the Senate Judiciary Committee. The opening statements for the bill, it's um, scheduled to start on April the 25th. From there, if the Senate Judiciary Committee passes the bill, we will be expecting to be hearing the bill in the Senate during May. If the bill is passed in May, the House is expected to hear it in July. More amendments may be made. It might get worse. We don't know what's going to happen. But we have our hopes really high that the time is now. The time is now for immigration reform. And our families and our community all around New Mexico and all around the country will continue fighting for the immigration reform. Not only one immigration reform, but a comprehensive immigration reform that includes all members of our families. So I invite you today to continue fighting as you've been fighting for this moment to happen during this summer. Thank you. My apologies, I get nervous up here sometimes. I just wanted to also point out we have two school board members, Linda Trujillo and Lorraine Price. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marina, for this update. Next, we are going to hear from our representatives in Washington. First, we're going to hear a statement from Senator Tom Udall. And reading this statement, and we will have Michelle Hackett for this. Please, help me to Marina did an excellent job in covering the highlights of the legislation, considering that they just dropped it. I think it was the last, was it last night? The night before last. She did an excellent job. We're still going through it. It was 844 pages, so very, very um, substantial legislation. Uh, the fact that you all chose this particular week to hold your uh, forum on immigration reform, I think, represents some truly charmed timing. Uh, the Gang of Eight has been working on this since January, so consider that a good sign. 
Uh, Senator Udall sent a short statement that I'd like to read for you. I promise that it won't be more than a couple of minutes. Thank you for inviting me to attend this town hall on immigration reform. I want to begin by thanking Mayor Koss for organizing this event, as well as the other co-organizers, including the City of Santa Fe Immigration Committee, the United Workers Center of New Mexico, the Northern New Mexico Central Labor Council, and the Interfaith Leadership Alliance. And thanks to all of you for spending your valuable time here today. We are at a unique moment in history for immigration reform. In his second term, President Obama has made comprehensive immigration reform a priority, and I stand behind him in this fall. During the administration of President George W. Bush, I supported bipartisan efforts to overhaul the immigration system, and I applaud President Obama for bringing this issue to the forefront again. One of America's greatest traditions as a nation, I believe, is our history of welcoming and valuing the contribution of our immigrants. We have an extraordinary opportunity to pass a long-term immigration solution to fix our broken immigration system. I am very encouraged by the Gang of Eight's proposal to secure our borders, bring undocumented individuals from the shadows, and enhance our visa and employment verification systems. The law on the books today does not work, and a piecemeal approach to reform will not result in the overhaul we need. There is much more work ahead, but now is the time to work together to take meaningful action. America loses if we do nothing. I look forward to reviewing the details of this legislation and to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to give this issue the attention that it deserves. I want to close by saying thank you to all of you for being here this evening. Today, more than ever, it is important for our communities to be aware of what's going on in Washington and to engage in the political process around important issues, including immigration reform. I thank you again for contributing to this evening's dialogue and look forward to hearing your personal experiences and suggestions as we move forward in addressing immigration reform. Sincerely, U.S. Senator Tom Udall. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words and thanks for the support of Senator Udall. Uh, we are also going to hear a statement from uh, Senator Martin Heinrich. Bring this statement. Let's welcome Mr. Andrew Black. Good evening. It's an uh, honor and a pleasure to be with you here this evening. Uh, my name is Andrew Black. I'm a field representative for U.S. Senator Martin Heinrich, and I cover immigration issues for the senator here in northern New Mexico. Um, as mentioned, I really want to thank the mayor for hosting this event. I mean, I think this is a tremendous event, but also the Committee on Immigration. There's probably many members from the committee. Would you all mind standing up? They've done some great work behind the scenes over a period of years. Thank you for the mayor who a lot of good work behind the scenes and, and, and do a lot of heavy lifting. You know, also, there's a couple other groups uh, beyond the ones that Michelle mentioned that I want to mention. Uh, you know, obviously, SOMOS has done a lot of work, both at the state level and, and, and also more nationally. Uh, you've got folks here from the New Mexico Dreamers. How many of the New Mexico Dreamers are here? Do you want to stand yes. up? Slow it down a little. Yes. And then Susan Duncan, I believe, stopped in from the school board, and uh, she was here. But, uh, yeah, so maybe she stepped out. Um, but I also wanted to say, you know, as a Presbyterian minister who was born and raised here in Santa Fe, I, I really want to personally thank you all for coming out tonight, especially since it's such a cold evening, um, and for giving me the opportunity more so to just listen and learn from you. Um, and I also really want to thank you for lending your voice to this important issue and, and just say I really look forward to continuing to work with each of you kind of in the coming weeks as we continue to work on immigration reform. Uh, so Senator Heinrich has provided me with the following statement, and I'd like to read you the Senator's words. Thank you for the opportunity to share a few words with you tonight. Fixing our broken immigration system is an urgent priority, and I applaud my colleagues in the Senate for finding common ground and making progress toward fixing this broken system. The immigration reform bill released yesterday is a start for debate, and I look forward to reviewing the legislation in its entirety. Successful immigration reform must include a visa system that meets the needs of our economy. 
a plan that ensures security along our borders, and a tough but fair path to earn citizenship for the estimated 11 million undocumented individuals who are in our country. Immigration reform must also be fair to American workers and taxpayers, and Congress must ensure that any reforms to our visa programs do not displace U.S. workers, undercut U.S. wages, or exploit migrant workers. A commitment to reform our country's immigration system also requires a commitment to our students. As a lead proponent of the DREAM Act, I am pleased that the bill includes a special pathway for students. Dreamers contribute so much to our country. Many want to be doctors, scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs, while others want to serve and defend our country in uniform. By including the DREAM Act provisions, the bill will allow for thousands of students across the country to gain more education and training, which translates into better and higher paying jobs. All of these extra wages will circulate through the economy, spurring economic growth and new job creation. It's time to make the DREAM Act a reality. I will work with my colleagues to ensure that this legislation works for our country and works for our families across New Mexico. Finally, we have made great advances in border security in the recent years. Illegal border crossing apprehensions are at historically low levels and have fallen in New Mexico by nearly 90% since their peak in 2005. Our challenge moving forward is to continue to ensure our nation's safety while balancing the need of our border communities to thrive and benefit from their unique binational culture and economy. With bipartisan support building in both houses of Congress and a president who is eager to solve the immigration problem, there is no reason we should not be able to get this done. New Mexicans are eager for a solution. Dream Act students deserve a solution, and our economy requires a solution. With this in mind, I will work to ensure that we achieve immigration reform that works for New Mexico. Este es el año. Again, thank you for lending your voices to this important cause, and for giving me the opportunity to share a few words with you this evening. Sincerely, Martin Heinrich, United States Senator. Black and we appreciate the support of Senator Henry. Next, we're going to have Jennifer Katekos with the office of Congressman Ben Ray Lujan reading a statement from his office. Please. Thank you for having me and thank you to the organizers of tonight's event. But I want to thank each and every one of you for prioritizing this conversation in your life tonight. It's made out tonight. So the congressman unfortunately couldn't be here but sent me with a statement. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me to join you tonight. I wish I could be with you in person. However, due to the legislative business, I must be in Washington. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few words with you about the latest developments in our efforts to pass comprehensive immigration reform. Earlier this week, the bipartisan Senate Group of Eight released their comprehensive immigration reform that includes a pathway to citizenship. I want to commend these senators for their months of hard work to craft a comprehensive solution to an issue that is so important to our economy, our security, and families in New Mexico and across the country. I look forward to carefully reviewing all of the details of this important legislation that I hope takes us a significant step closer to passing reform that is fair, tough, and practical. The inclusion of a strong DREAM Act proposal which recognizes the contributions that young people are making to our country as they pursue an education or serve in the military is an important component of this reform package. A growing coalition has formed and momentum is building toward a comprehensive solution. I want to thank all of you for lending your voice to this effort. We will be successful if we continue to have a drumbeat that lets members of Congress know that the American people demand action. As this debate has moved forward, I have called for reform that strengthens our economy, keeps our country safe, and reflects the contributions immigrants make to our communities every day. While an ultimate solution will be a compromise in which neither side gets everything they want, I believe that any solution should meet these principles. I am encouraged by what I have seen so far in the Senate proposal. However, there are still many details that need to be discussed and reviewed. And this is the beginning of an important process as hearings begin and other members of Congress now weighing in on this legislation. Again, thank you for being a part of the movement calling for comprehensive immigration reform. Working together, I know we can be successful in seeing landmark reform that fixes our broken immigration system signed into law. Sincerely, Congressman Ben Ray First, 
Thank you, Mrs. Kitechov. Thank you very much. We appreciate your words and the support of Congressman Lohan. And we would like to ask to the people who speak, if they speak, can speak a little slower, because we have some people translating. Please. Thank you very much. Well, now we're, uh, we're going to listen some testimonies from members of the United Workers <laughs> Center of New Mexico. So I'd like to introduce to you the Workers Committee and members of the community from Somos de Pueblo Unido and the United Workers Center of New Mexico. Um, we know that part of, a big part of the reason why you're here today um, is to hear the stories from our community members, and so that's what we're gonna do next. I'd like to present Lorenzo Ramirez. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Lorenzo Ramirez. I am a member of the Workers Committee at the United Workers Center of New Mexico. I have lived in the U.S. for 18 years. Twelve of them I have lived in New Mexico. I, I came to the United States in 1995 from Mexico with the illusion of finding a job so, uh, so I could have a decent life for me and my family in Mexico. I have my mother in Mexico whom I have not seen for 18 years and uh, also it has been difficult. I have tried to live uh, in this country in a civilized manner the best I could. And so I want to, I want to continue doing it. Uh, during these years, I have held various jobs, such as I have worked in agriculture for a few years. I have worked in a factory, but most of the time I have been a construction worker. I have built too many houses. None of them is mine, though. <laughs> Throughout these years, I have had several bad experiences, such as abuse by employers who, knowing of my immigration status, have taken advantage of that. Sometimes I haven't got paid for other time. Sometimes I haven't got paid for all the hours I, I worked. Uh, I also feel like sometimes I have not had the same opportunities to get promoted for example, uh, being undocumented has automatically discarded me from being promoted to a position of foreman or a manager. This despite of not only having the same skills, but in many cases having even greater skills than many of my foremen or supervisors. Some other times I have been a victim of abuse by landlords who have threatened me or reported me to ICE just for asking them to make some kind of repairs in the home. Ever since I live in the U.S., I don't get government benefits. I have never done. The fact that I could adjust my immigration status does not mean I would be a burden to this country because I am a responsible and hard-working person who just needs one opportunity to continue contributing to this country. That way I could achieve my dreams of starting my own business and why not even generate some jobs for someone else. I respectfully ask you to support this immigration reform that will benefit not only immigrants but also our communities. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jorge Lopez. I'm from Guatemala. I'm 20 years old, 25 years old. I came to the United States five years ago, like undocumented person. Uh, two years ago, I started my own business of landscaping, and I'm a member of Somos 
of the Worker Center of Somos Un Pueblo Unido. I'm a student of the San Rafael Community College. Para mí, la esperanza de pasar una reforma migratoria me da más seguridad en este país. En el 2011 fui víctima de un crimen de odio. Tres jóvenes blancos me atacaron repentinamente mientras yo caminaba en el centro de Santa Fe. Mientras me golpeaban, brutalmente gritaban que yo era un ilegal. Yo estuve inconsciente hasta el próximo día que desperté en el hospital. Nunca supe nada de mis atacantes. Días después, mientras me recuperaba en casa, agentes de Ice Police tocó mi puerta buscando a otra persona que yo no conocía. Yo cometí el error de abrirles la puerta y me arrestaron aún cuando les expliqué que tenía un caso pendiente en la corte por la golpiza que me habían dado. Estuve en el centro de detención en El Paso, Texas por seis meses. Finalmente pude salir con una visa U para víctimas de violencia. No solo fue una experiencia traumatizante para mí, pero también para mi familia en Guatemala. Ellos también fueron afectados, ya que mis padres tienen tratamientos médicos de por vida. Y yo no les podía mandar dinero porque estaba incomunicado y estaba detenido en el centro de, en el centro de detención. A pesar de que tengo una visa U, no puedo ir a Guatemala a visitar a mis padres enfermos, ni ver a mis hermanos. Con una migratoria yo podría reunirme con, con mi familia y al igual que vivir más tranquilamente en este país. También haciendo crecer mi negocio y continuando así mi contribución a esta economía de este país. The time is now for immigration reform. Thanks. Mi nombre es Lilian López. Tengo cinco, a, cinco años de ser miembro de Somos un Pueblo Unido. Y, y tengo diez años de estar aquí en Estados Unidos, en Santa Fe. Y siempre he soñado de ser una enfermera, pero por mi estatus migratorio no he podido lograrlo hacer. Y tengo a mi familia en Guatemala. Quiero viajar, tampoco no puedo ser. Escucho que ellos están hospitalizados, están enfermos, mi madre. Pero no he podido viajar por mi estatus migratorio. Por favor, apóyennos, porque somos trabajos. soy una trabajadora, no soy criminal. Espero en Dios que ustedes nos apoyen para poder lograr esta reforma migratoria. Muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Luis Muñoz y soy miembro de Somos un Pueblo Unido. Yo vengo desde México, vivía aquí desde los 12 años. Cuando mi papá fue deportado, me quedé solo en este país. Um, me salí de la escuela a los 17 años para empezar a trabajar. La razón que me salí fue porque me decepcionaron y frustraron porque yo sentía que me estaban, no me estaban dando el apoyo que necesitaba en la escuela, porque unos maestros me decían que avanzaba en inglés y luego me devolvían a y esa otra vez. Después decidí salirme de la escuela, empezar a trabajar, donde fui víctima de discriminación y robo de salario de parte de mi empleador. Después de eso nos corrieron y, y ahora tengo un hijo que mantener y tengo a, a mi esposa. Regresé al mismo trabajo para, para seguir aportando más para mi, mi familia. Yo, quiero, yo apoyo esta reforma migratoria porque quiero cumplir un sueño que tengo desde que llegué a este país. Quiero ser arquitecto. Tener una casa aquí, formar, formar un, una nueva familia con, con la que estoy empezando, porque mis papás, mis papás están en México y no pueden venir, yo no les puedo visitar. Muchas gracias.
Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Luis Juárez, soy de Guatemala y soy un miembro del Comité de Trabajadores de Santa Fe Tortilla y un, y un miembro del Comité de, de Somos un Pueblo Unido. En los años he trabajado en la empresa de dicha de, de dicho nombre y fui víctima de discriminación por dicha parte de los manejadores y encargados de dicha compañía. Usando en mi contra mi estatus migratorio, fui despedido y sin importar mi condición física porque yo ya estando en la, en la compañía me enteré de que padecía de cáncer y sin tener la mínima consideración me siguieron tratando mal y a pesar de que yo tenía que limitar y hacer mi trabajo, como siempre, por mi condición, jamás dejé de hacer mi trabajo como ellos me exigían. Y por eso, y muchas cosas más, creo que la reforma no, no solo a mí me beneficiaría, sino a muchas personas que a pesar de su condición son tratados como delincuentes y yo creo que trabajar en este país no es un delito. Y es hora de que la comunidad indocumentada salga de la sombra de donde está. Gracias. Buenas noches a todos. Mi nombre es María Rodríguez. Soy mexicana, orgullosamente. Eh, tengo 18 años aquí. Eh, vine con un hijo de 9 años. Para nosotros fue muy pesado el venir aquí eh, porque dejábamos nuestra familia, tres hijos más que tenía ya, pero venía buscando el sueño americano. Yo escuchaba desde niña que aquí en Estados Unidos era muy fácil tener una casa. Entonces era siempre mi sueño el decir, es mi casa, tengo una casa, ese era siempre mi sueño. Llego aquí y, y me doy cuenta de que no es verdad que solamente teniendo un buen trabajo, que solamente teniendo un seguro social. Trabajé y trabajé hasta tres, cuatro trabajos diarios. A veces llegaba a las cuatro, cinco de la mañana para levantarme a las ocho. Llegué trabajando en un hotel usando otro nombre, que para mí era muy, muy bonito, porque no me gustaba mi nombre, pero aquí se valía ponerse otro nombre, pues entonces busqué uno bien bonito, pero cuando me llamaban por ese nombre, que era Alma, pues estaba tan acostumbrada a mi nombre que, que pues ni siquiera me daba cuenta de que era a mí a la que me estaban hablando. No sabía qué, qué era una, cómo se le de, llamaba aquí a las aspiradoras. Y me decían, tienes que dar vacuum aquí. Y yo decía, pues, ¿qué, ¿qué es? Entonces, pero yo estaba enfocada en que, en que yo tenía que tener una casa. Gracias a Dios y a todas las oportunidades que también me han dado este país. Eh, ahorita, a pesar de que fui víctima de de robo de salario, de discriminación, de muchísimas cosas. He encontrado personas como todos ustedes, a, a muchos de ustedes este, tienen personas que les limpian sus casas, que son hispanos como yo. Me he encontrado con personas bien lindas que me tratan muy bien, pero sigo en la lucha de buscar mi sueño. Pero ¿qué pasa? Ahorita ya no me siento ni mexicana, Tampoco, ni, no, o sea, como la India María, no soy ni de aquí ni de allá. ¿Por qué? Porque me hace falta ese seguro social que me piden aquí para estar bien, ya segura, para decir, quiero tener una casa, pero no me dan un crédito. Quiero, tengo gracias a Dios una traila que muchas veces... Digo, se le está cayendo una ventana, se le está cayendo una puerta, pero ya no tengo ya no tengo eso de que si se la compro y el día de mañana me echan y me quedo sin mi sueño. 
yo sé que para ustedes eh, el, el hecho de que estemos aquí a lo mejor eh, no, no les gusta mucho eh, o no sé, pero nosotros venimos a contribuir también porque si se dan cuenta el hecho de que yo compre una casa de que yo compre un carro, que yo compre una estufa porque la necesito estoy pagando impuestos el hecho de que yo, va, yo haga un crédito en un banco, estoy pagando impuestos, estoy contribuyendo aquí, porque me encanta esta ciudad, me encanta este país. Eh, yo pienso que, que si se hace una reforma como, como la estamos solicitando tantos de nosotros, eh, va a ser para beneficio también de ustedes, porque estoy contribuyendo a la ciudad, estoy contribuyendo al país. Entonces, yo les pido a todos ustedes que nos apoyen, porque ya es justo, ya lo necesitamos, ya son muchos años de estar aquí en las sombras. Muchas gracias por asistir. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you guys so much to our membership, to the people who have given their testimony. Um, Okay, vamos a pasar con nuestro último testimonio. If um, the businesses and the rest of the people who are going to give testimony could please line up on this microphone. Thank you very much. Buenas noches, mi nombre es María Guadalupe. Todo el mundo me conoce por Lupita. Quiero pedirles a todas las personas que sean portavoz de nuestros sentimientos y de nuestros sueños. Es la primera vez que quiero pedirle que sean portavoz. Este es el país de las reglas. Y yo la rompí hace 18 años. Ese es mi único pecado, haber roto una regla, porque era venir de vacaciones y quedarme en este país. Pero después de tener a mi hija, yo ya no podía dar marcha atrás. Dejé mi familia, dejé mi trabajo, dejé mis sueños. ¿Por qué? Adoro este país a donde tuve a mi hija, pero también es el mundo de las opresiones. Los miedos y las opresiones paralizan. Es horrible vivir como los alcohólicos, un día a la vez. Trabajamos, somos buenos ciudadanos, no hemos cometido criminalidad. De estos 11 millones, pienso que la mayoría nos merecemos la oportunidad de quedarnos en este país, ya no por nosotros, por nuestros hijos. Yo cometí un error de romper una ley, de quedarme en un país que no era mío, pero yo no puedo regresar a un país donde hay violencias, donde no tengo que ofrecerle a mis hijos, nada que ofrecerle. Lo único que pido, que pido es, como dijo la persona que acaba de hablar, es tiempo. Es tiempo de que se nos dé la oportunidad de vivir una vida emocional, una calidad de vida emocional tranquila, porque sin la calidad de vida emocional no se puede vivir, se paraliza. Y desgraciadamente, qué bueno que sea un país de reglas. Yo quiero decirles que dentro de los 11 millones de personas indocumentadas que estamos aquí, hay doctores, ingenieros, licenciados, artesanos, gente que puede ayudar a este país a producir para no seguir. Hay que exportar. ¿Eh? Tenemos muchas cosas que ofrecer. Unámonos. Vamos a ser un país. Este año tiene que ser un país de cambio. Nosotros estamos dispuestos en agradecimiento de que ustedes nos den la oportunidad de vivir una vida estable aquí en aportar lo que tenemos. Hay mucha gente que tiene títulos, hay mucha gente que tiene, pero no puede hacer nada porque no tiene un seguro social. A pesar de mis depresiones, porque es horrible vivir pensando que quiero ser madre, pero también quiero ser hija. Mi papá, mi madre están enfermos. Se murió fulano, se murió sultano. Y nosotros, con los nervios, no quiero vivir, no quiero vivir eso. Me, queda, me llame un día y me diga, que mi madre ya no está. Me he esforzado y de nada me ha servido tener esta. Me esforcé, me he esforzado, luché para tener esa licencia del Estado, que me la gané. Y de nada me sirve ser una... Si yo no tengo un seguro social, ¿de qué me sirve? ¿De qué me sirvió mi esfuerzo de estudiar y mi sacrificio? Y de querer distraerme para no pensar en la ausencia de mis padres y, quedarme, y querer quedarme con mis hijos. Unámonos, 
sean portavoz de nosotros. No nos vamos a dar por mal servidos. Vamos a crecer juntos. Estados Unidos tiene muchas cosas que dar junto con ustedes y junto con nosotros. Gracias. And it hurts me, and it hurts the entire family because knowing that it's been 18 years that my mom hasn't seen my grandparents. And just the thought of her not being able to see them affects the entire family because it's emotional. I remember this one time, I'll make it short, that immigration was knocking at the door. We were scared, I was scared. My mom fell into depression, and it was scary to know that immigration is there. It's here, and it's looking for families, and it's tearing families apart. But also, speaking for the kids my age, is there's so many of us that want to study, that want to do so much in this world. But having, being undocumented, we don't have the opportunity to do that. We don't have, we're not treated as well as the ones that are documented. And like a lot of people say, we are the future. And there are so many people that want to do so much, that want to become doctors, that want to help. But there's people holding us back from being able to do that. And just being able to be part of this, this world, this country, it'll help us a lot because we can make a difference. No matter how much people say that we can't, we can, we really can, as long as we're willing to do it. And as long as there are people that are there to support us. And speaking for me, um, I like studying, I love studying, I love school, and I love it here. I really do. But I would want to meet my family, and I know my, my mom would too. And it's hard not being able to, to go to someone and be like, hey, Grandma. Like, how other people have that chance that they can come home and they can be like, hey, there's my grandma. And it hurts because I want to be able to have that chance to come home and say, hey, look, there's my grandma. There's my grandpa. He's sitting on the porch. But I don't. And this reform would really help. Because knowing that your family's here with you and you don't have to be scared to cross and never come back. To know that you can go and you can come back and you can have the same life. You can have that opportunity to see your family without being scared that one day you're going to come back and not see your parents. My mom has always said that one day if anything happens, I know that she'll be here for me. But I've always been scared that she's, she's going to leave and never come back. And I want my family here, and I want my parents here. And it sh there should be so many rights that people can be able to be here and not be scared that their family is going to be torn apart. Just one more testimony. amargas dentro de, del puesto de, de los trabajos donde me ha tocado estar. Es por eso que estoy aquí para darles un testimonio que para mí es un poco difícil, porque por medio de, de la organización de Somos un Pueblo Unido, que, que soy miembro hace nueve años, no es para mí posible o justo 
que yo tenga que haberme involucrado en organizar seis comités diferentes de diferentes negocios para defender nuestros derechos como trabajadores de la discriminación que estábamos sufriendo por parte de los patrones. Siempre que tratábamos de defendernos, lo único que nos decían era que nosotros no teníamos papeles buenos y lo que nos iban a hacer es echar la migración. Muchos los que no, uh, no pudieron defender o, sea, o hacer valer sus derechos, se corrieron, se fueron. Dejaron el trabajo por el temor a que el patrón hiciera lo que, lo que se había propuesto, de echarnos migración. Entonces, para mí, una reforma migratoria es para nosotros, todos los trabajadores que estamos acá, dentro de los Estados Unidos, perder ese miedo y hacer valer nuestros derechos ante un patrono que quiera humillarnos o tratarnos como basura. Gracias a todo esto, con los esfuerzos que hemos hecho a través del Centro de Trabajadores de Nuevo México y peleando nuestros derechos, hemos podido recaudar un poco más de un millón de dólares de sueldos, de sueldos robados por los patrones. Eso quiere decir de que hay discriminación hacia nuestra gente, hacia nosotros. Por lo cual, yo les pido a ustedes que nos apoyen que por una reforma migratoria para que estas discriminaciones por parte de patronos no siga ocurriendo con nuestra gente y con todos. Porque también sabemos que no solo nosotros, hemos tenido casos de, de, de ciudadanos que también han sido maltratados, pero también es a veces por falta de desconocimiento de las leyes y sabemos que Estados Unidos es un país de leyes donde se hacen barrer las leyes. Por lo tanto, esto es lo que yo quiero decirles a ustedes de los testimonios y de lo que he sufrido durante los 11 años que he estado acá dentro de este país. Considero que el aporte que damos cada uno de nosotros es de beneficio para todos. Pagamos nuestros impuestos, no somos eh, criminales, no estamos eh, haciéndole daño a nadie, no le estamos quitando el trabajo a nadie, como se nos acusa de que le venimos a quitar el trabajo a las personas, pero simplemente nosotros venimos a hacer los trabajos más duros que hay acá, como por ejemplo, lavar platos, abrir una, una zanja de, con pico y pala, trabajando 8 o 10 horas bajo el sol, o a veces incluso bajo la nieve, es algo que nosotros estamos acostumbrados a hacerlo dentro de nuestro país, y es por eso que lo venimos a hacer aquí. Y demostramos que lo hacemos con cariño, con esmero, para sacar adelante este país y a nuestra familia. Muchas gracias. Thank you all for your participation and for your stories. A lot of people would like to participate with their opinions about this immigration reform, and we would like to give the floor to other community members. We will begin with the deacon of San Isidro Parish. Please welcome, let me help to welcome to a really good friend of our community, deacon Anthony Trujillo. Buenas noches. Uh, as was mentioned, I am Deacon Anthony Trujillo from San Isidro Parish. <clears throat> I'm also coordinator for Hispanic Youth and Young Adults for the Archdiocese of San Pate. And I'd like to, uh, to remind people that the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops are in full support of immigration uh, reform, as well as the New Mexico Conference of, uh, of Bishops. For my part, and in listening to the, to the witnesses that have just spoken, I, I hear those stories often. And I hear them in, in ways, as a minister, that maybe most people don't get the opportunity to hear. And my heart breaks often because of that. As was mentioned, the pandilla de Osho, the gang of eight, <laughs> uh, released their document, and it's curious to me that it takes 
And please, people don't come putting it down. But it seems curious to me that it takes 844 pages to say, you're my brother, you're my sister. <laughs> And that I can sit next to you and not have a worry that one of us is going to be picked up for whatever reason somebody wants to pick us up. I, as a, as, as a coordinator for Hispanic and Youth for the Archdiocese, and in my travels throughout the state, these stories are also familiar out there. And one of the things that bothers me is that it seems like we're in a, a period of time in our history that there is so much anger, that there is so much resentment to, for whatever reason that we fail to recognize that we were created by the same God and that God himself didn't put the, fr the, the borders, the fronteras, uh, people did. Well, if people put the borders, people can change the borders. And the border that I'm talking about is not a physical line. It's more an emotional line or a spiritual line that says, we are one. You know? And 844 pages, thank you. Uh, and as was mentioned, it's still going to go through committee hearings and it's going to go through a whole lot of other stuff. Those 844 pages are going to double. That's the way government works, sorry guys. That's the way government works. But what is important for us, and I thank everybody for being here tonight, because it takes a voice to change things. And the louder that voice speaks, as we unfortunately saw, with, as the mayor said, uh, with the gun reform yesterday, uh, the louder the voice, the more we progress. And I thank you, and God bless you. Good evening. Um, I just want to say I represent the Northern New Mexico Central Labor Council. Central Labor Council. I'm a member of Communication Workers of America, state employees. Am I not close enough? <laughs> and uh, last summer, Somos and Pueblos Unidos became an affiliate of the AFL-CIO. And I can't tell you how proud we were. <laughs> to welcome them to the Central Labor Council and under our umbrella. And right now, the um, squeaky clean workers are going to be negotiating their first contract for a, a labor project. So welcome, and I, I can only say one thing about the immigration reforms. It's not time, it's long past to do. Next up we have Alejandra Saluca representing the Hispanic chain. Good evening. Um, well, I, I'm not representing the Hispanic Chamber, but uh, I just want to say that I received a statement right now that uh, the Santa Fe Hispanic Chamber um, um, supports immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, on another note, I want to talk on behalf of Guadalupe Credit Union, where I work. Uh, and I just want to mention that right now we have $14 million in the books on um, loans to undocumented immigrants. I can only imagine how that would change if we have immigration reform. We know a lot of people are still in fear. We do have uh, four million in, in the books and mortgages. We can do much more if the immigration reform passes and people are not afraid. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we would like to give the floor to our elected officials to answer some questions and listen to their opinions about this topic. So, in your packets, there were a couple of questions that I asked um, if you would consider throughout our forum. So I'm going to ask if we could each go down the line if anybody has anything to say. If they could come up to that middle line. Thank you. 
What did you learn tonight, and what do you want to share with other members of your governing body? Good evening, everyone. Uh, I guess I learned a lot. Some that I didn't know. Uh, you know, as many people said, this immigration reform, it is long overdue. To the little girl that spoke earlier before you, you are one powerful little girl. Let me tell you this. Every senator, every representative in the United States Congress should hear what you said. You almost brought me to tears because as somebody who is born and raised here, I have my I have my grandparents. And how important they are to me. And your story really touched me. I see that from a, you know, from somebody who's here. You know, sometimes we take for granted. It's a great thing that we, that we were born into. You know, I believe we as elected officials, we need to definitely, you know, keep in contact, which I think Santa Fe is pretty much very good at that. But we have a very good relationship with all our elected officials in Washington. I can promise you this, I'll be talking to Congressman Heinrich, Ben Ray, uh, Udall, and I will call also the Kathy Miller. He appears, so I definitely will call him and let him know coming from me. I must be from my other colleagues on the city council. But I will definitely let you know that I will be contacting them via email, via telephone, and letting them know that uh, they, they have to support this. Uh, as the deacon said, you know, unfortunately, 800 pages probably will turn into 1,600 by the time it gets done. But you know what? As long as that process does happen, that's the good thing. So my hope is that. By July, when they said it will go to the, to the House of Representatives, by then hopefully we will have something, and you know the pathway to citizenship, citizenship will occur. So I just want to say that, and uh, thank you guys for all being here because you know you've uh, opened my eyes to a few things that I did not know. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. to make that a reality for your family, as well as all the other families that are here in America and that are across the border in, in, in Mexico um, or Guatemala or wherever they are, um, I am committed to make that happen. Uh, our school board, I will be introducing a resolution this next week to support comprehensive immigration reform that includes the things that were discussed here tonight. So I encourage you to call your school board members and, um, and, and ask them to support that, that resolution. And as a, as a board, we are working to do whatever we can to make sure that our students are safe, that our families are welcome, and that our teachers and our staff understand the challenges and how they can help to make your lives better. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, and that's what we will be doing.
as we're going up there, I'll just repeat the second question. What can you, as elected um, officials, board, council, commission, do to support a just immigration reform for people of Santa Fe? Get back to the first one in a minute. <laughs> um, I wrote down some words. First of all, reality is okay. You'll miss you. Say go up and down the Okay, because I could understand half of what you said. Maybe tell you. Come on. Maybe half. Not so many. So that's a personal thing that I need to work on. Um, as I was listening, I wrote down the words um, fear, sadness discrimination, pain, and then I also wrote down the words contributions being made to us in this community. I wrote down um, inequity. I'm empowered by those travesties and my own commitment. I do write letters. I get real nervous when we have an 800-page bill and then we talk about reading the bill, and then we talk about it's a start for a debate. Um, I think there's a lot of due diligence that we're going to need to do as a community to make sure that this bill comes forward to fruition. And like the mayor and many people, I was naively shocked that we didn't get anything through on gun control. So I guess what I want to share is my commitment to diligence because even though it should happen, and even though we're excited about bringing this forward, I'm concerned that it actually come to fruition and provide the rights that all of you deserve and have you as full citizens here and participating uh, to deal with these stories of um, being here 18, 20 years and never being able to connect with your families and never being able to really feel like you're part of the country in which you live and work and contribute. So that's my commitment. And the only one other thing I just wrote down, what is our training in Santa Fe, David Cross, on racial profiling? Let's talk tomorrow. <laughs> Buenas noches a todos. Uh, my name is Joe Maestas, uh, former mayor of Española. I'm a resident of Santa Fe, and uh, what I learned is, ahora es el tiempo, verdad? Yeah. Ahora es el tiempo. I, I just briefly want to thank the conveners of this dialogue, and you know, I've been very involved as Mayor Cos mentioned in this issue. Uh, Mayor Koss and I received the OFI Award. It's one of the highest civilian awards given to those outside of Mexico by the country of Mexico in championing issues of concern to the Mexican community. So I'm very proud to be here. And I'm, I'm most proud because what I learned is the introduction of this legislation in the U.S. Senate has really heightened our hope. But what I want to say is to temper that hope is to channel that hope into action. What I want you to do is I want you to look at this legislation and look at portions of it that are not good and come up with some very strong amendments that will make it work for everyone. We have representatives from our congressional delegation that are here tonight to find out what amendments you'd like for that legislation. So, ya basta con palabras, necesitamos acción, ¿verdad? I want you to look at this legislation very closely. The devil is always in the details, right? And I want you, perhaps, Mayor, we can put together a committee uh, to craft some very strong amendments and even you know, you know, meet with our congressional delegation and encourage them to present this amendment on behalf of our community because we all know Santa Fe is the hotbed for activism and progressiveness. And so why shouldn't some very dynamic, Constructive amendments come from right here in this community. Thank you very much to our elected officials for their input, for their opinions, and especially for taking the time to be here. Un aplauso para ellos, por favor.
We are very excited about um, having a... Oh, sorry. Buenas <laughs> noches. I'm uh, Linda Siegel, and I'm on the Santa Fe Community College Board. And it was the Santa Fe Community College, I was the chair of the board at the time, we were the first college in New Mexico to admit undocumented students. <laughs> have gone to the college and go to the college, and we welcome you. And out of this legislation, we really need to make sure that those of you who go to our college who get nursing degrees, one of you mentioned nursing degrees, and get one of our vocational degrees, or get a marketing degree, or whatever it is that you get, that then you can get a job with that degree. And the college, you know, our, our delegation here in New Mexico is very supportive of this, as we've heard from our um, representatives. We have got to, there's this, in new age lingo, there's this hundred monkey thing. And the idea of uh, the hundred monkey is, what happened is there were all these monkeys and they started uh, using rocks to break open uh, shells, and one, and one was on this continent, and one was on another continent, and there were ten over on this continent, and then suddenly, when the hundred monkey broke that shell with the rock, it's like all over, all the monkeys started using the rocks to break their shells, and that's what we need to do. We have to make sure that in our country, everyone wakes up to to what we're supposed to believe in America, that all of us are created equal, that we're all equal in the eyes of whatever the creator is you believe in, and that we should have the same opportunities and access to what is good about this country. So we have to make sure that our friends who live in Texas and Arizona and uh, my sister lives in Arizona. We have to make sure in those places that those people wake up to the fact that it is time to allow the people that have lived here and allow the people who want to come here to be part of this country. Thank you. Hello, I'm Meredith Machen, and I'm uh, usually in front of this group as uh, League of Women Voters, but I'm uh, here tonight um, also just to follow up on Linda's comments about the community college. Um, I want everybody to know that we have free English as a second language classes through the Adult Basic Education Program. We have free um, English as a second language and basic literacy through, through literacy volunteers, which is housed in the adult basic education program. We have citizenship classes. If, um, if you know people who need any of the above, or if you're willing to tutor, we need literacy volunteers to tutor English as second language and basic literacy. Uh, please see me now, or go to the community college and sign up, sign up for classes, or sign up to help people learn English, because you're gonna need it for, um, you know, for your path to citizenship and uh, we welcome you and have lots of other resources for you. Thank you. Pues buenas tardes, soy Susan Duncan de la Junta Directiva de la, las Escuelas aquí en Santa Fe. Y quisiera decir que hay muchas cosas que podemos hacer en la ciudad y en las escuelas. Primero, estamos hablando de tener un centro de bienvenidos para los inmigrantes, para que los padres y los estudiantes puedan sentir bienvenidos aquí y recibir uh, ayuda que necesitan para empezar en nuestras escuelas y nuestra ciudad. Otra cosa es más entrenamiento para los maestros, que necesitan entrenamiento para tener más conciencia de, de cómo es la situación de las familias inmigrantes. También estamos hablando de horarios 
flexibles en las escuelas secundarias para que los niños que tienen que trabajar para ayudar a su familia pueden asistir a clases en la noche o los fines de semana. También estamos hablando de más programas bilingües para que los niños puedan continuar con su idioma y su cultura aquí en Santa Fe. Y en general más apoyo para los estudiantes inmigrantes porque yo sé que hemos tenido problemas en las escuelas y muchos no sienten cómodo como el joven que habló y que tenemos que cambiar todo eso, pero que tú, ustedes tienen que presionar porque siempre el cambio viene de la presión de la comunidad y la, de las familias y, y nada pasa sin, sin, sin eso, entonces tenemos que luchar siempre. My name is Lorraine Price and I've been asked to be brief. Um, most people know that that's what I'm known for being brief and blunt. Um, it breaks my heart to stand here and hear this again. Uh, but you know what? We shall indeed overcome. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, buenas noches a todos. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos de Oces. We have Lucila Campos and I, Coral Estrada, and Cynthia. and Cynthia. And I stand in front of you, before you, as, an, as a graduate student at Highlands University, as an undocumented student 